producing over 500 hours per week of talk radio. GCN Live is a world leader in talk radio. Archives for the following program can be found at GCNlive.com. Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We want to help you change your life today. We want to help you change the lives of friends, loved ones, family members today. If you have questions about your prescription medication or ingredients or formulations, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or particular ingredients or skin health questions or skin care product questions, 844-236-6010 is our number. Likewise, if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear recommended or advertised on the program, or if you want to join the Bright Side Ben team, love to have you on my team. We can do this thing together. We can help change the world via nutritional supplementation together. Call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Tell them you want to join the Brightside Ben team. If you want to purchase products, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine or the Healthy Start Pack or the Sweeties or any of the products we recommend, you can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470. They can take your order or you can head over to my blog, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com and order right from the websites. Likewise, brightsideben.com and... BenFuchsArchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that one up. And then if you want to purchase any of my truth treatment products, including our retinol 5% gel made with 5% retinol and a whole bunch of premium fat-soluble vitamin C. No preservative, no fragrance, no filler, no oil, no wax, no nothing your skin doesn't need. Just 100% active and functional ingredients. That's how I make my truth treatment products, and that's what you deserve. You shouldn't have to pay for things you're not using. You shouldn't have to pay for things that your skin has to clear away or purify either. TruthTreatments.com, you can find out all about it. TruthTreatments.com, also have a skin health blog at TruthTreatments.com. Okay, we've been spending a lot of time talking about fats and fatty vitamins and fatty hormones and particularly the omega fatty acids. There's two of these omega fats, two of these that are considered essential, I should say. Although some people will tell you there's three. There are only two. They're called... ALA, which is an omega-6, and LA, which is an omega-3. That's it. Only two. ALA, omega-6, found in flax seeds. Primarily, that's the main nutritional source for it. It's found in lots of different seeds. It's basically a seed oil, ALA. And then, uh, and grains, by the way, count as a seed. And grains are a source of ALA. And then there's LA, omega-3s, which... Uh, which are also found, I'm sorry, I said uh, flax seeds are a source of, uh, of LA, not ALA. I apologize for that. ALA is omega-6, and that's not flaxseed-based. LA is omega-3s. If you prefer, you can call them alpha-linolenic acid or linoleic acid. Those are the technical names. The third, the point I want to make here is the third one that you hear a lot about, it's not an essential fatty acid. The third omega that you hear about, omega-9, 
omega-6s found in grains, omega-3s found in flax and chia and hemp seed for that matter. Those are essential. You need them in your diet. Your body cannot make them. Omega-9s don't count as an essential fatty acid, oleic acid. I'm not saying it's not important though. It is important. It's very important actually, but it's not essential. These things, these omegas are so important, whether they're omega-6s and 3s, which are essential, or omega, excuse me, omega-9s, which are not essential. They're still important, essential or not essential, they're still important. That's because of the omega. That word omega is very meaningful. Omega means a double bond. Now, I don't want to get into too much chemistry here, but it's kind of interesting and also very important if we're going to know how to use these things. When you hear the omega, when you hear the word omega, what you're, what you're hearing is a double bond, and that means electricity. That means energy. Omegas are highly electrical substances, and this is what accounts for their unbelievably powerful and important nature. This is why they're found, the body will put them into the outside part of a cell. So the outside part of a cell becomes super electrical. A cell in general is a little battery. It's got a polarity. It's got, conducts an electrical charge from the outside to the inside. It's like a little battery. And this battery power is largely accomplished via the action of the omegas. Omegas store electrical energy. They got a double bond, and that's really important. And I don't want to get into too much organic chemistry or biochemistry, but it's just really cool. Double bonds are like magnets. In fact, all bonds are like magnets. That's what a bond is. If you've ever played with magnets when you're a kid, or an adult for that matter, you can get a good sense of how chemistry works. It's all about magnets. In fact, I didn't even understand organic chemistry. I remember when I first took organic chemistry, when I, uh, when I first went to pharmacy school, I had to take or organic chemistry to get into pharmacy school, and I didn't know what the heck was going on. I couldn't understand it. It was, just, it, was, it was just gibberish to me, and I would study, and I would study, and I would study. I'd stay up all night studying, and I'd end up in almost always with the lowest grade in the class. And I thought I was a smart guy, and I just couldn't figure out organic chemistry. I actually had to drop the course because I was going to fail it miserably, not just fail it, but fail it miserably. And I had to drop the course, and I didn't know what I was going to do because I, I wanted to go to pharmacy school, and I had to, have, uh, I had to, have a, uh, uh, I had to have, take organic chemistry to get into pharmacy school. And not only did I fail it, I didn't even begin to understand it until I took it the second time, and all of a sudden it hit me. It's all about magnets. And from that point forward, not only did I ace organic chemistry, but I understood chemistry inside and out. And I could predict things, and I could figure things out, and I did, that was my specialty in pharmacy school was chemistry, was medicinal chemistry. Because I got that it was all about magnets. That's all it is, folks. If you've ever played with magnets you and, and, and kind of got a sense for how the things go together or don't go together, you can understand chemistry. Most of us have seen these little pictures of chemical structures with all the various lines connecting all the various atoms. Well, each one of those lines that you see connecting all the various atoms and those, those, those line drawings that look just like little stick figures of sorts, each one of those lines is a magnet. Each one of those lines is called a bond, but it's really a magnet. And you could think of those magnets or those bonds as being the ultimate basis of all living things. Everything that lives is dependent on these magnets or these bonds. And by the way, nobody knows how these things go together. We know that they're there, but how exactly they go together, nobody knows. That's one of the fundamental mysteries of physics and biology and, and science is how these things stick together. So we'll leave that as just a, a given because we don't know how it happens. They call that the electromagnetic force and they just, they just call it a force because they don't know what it is. They might as well call it a thing or, or, or something or stuff because nobody knows exactly what it is. It's one of the great unknowns of science. But luckily for us, it does occur. That's why we're here, because this electromagnetic bond occurs. So you can think of everything from a bacteria to a fungus to a plant to a tree to an animal to a human being. Everything that's alive is being nothing more than a compilation of gazillions, countless. Uh, there's no number to come up with. In, in, uh, of these infinitesimally small magnetic bonds that are connected via this force. 
And you can think of vitamins and fats and carbs and proteins and everything we know as nutrition as a bunch of complex magnets with all these little magnetic connections. I'll, we'll finish up when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about anything we're talking about here today, fats, omegas, essential fatty acids, they're so mysterious, these EFAs, but they're darn important essential fatty acids, or if you have questions about skin health issues or the longevity products, if you want to, uh, if you have uh, questions about ingredients in any of the products or questions about how to use any of the products, our number 844-236-6010. And if you have a success story you'd like to share, we love hearing those. Uh, also, if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. You can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com, and benfuchsarchives.com. Or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470. Okay, so the whole thing is all of chemistry, all of nutrition, all of vitamins, all of carbs. They're all about connections. It's kind of cool when you think about it. It's all about relationships, connections. Chemistry is all about connections. That's what chemistry is, really. It's all about relationships and connections, how things are related to each other. When two people get along, we say they have chemistry. That's what chemistry is. Chemistry is how things get together. And if you understand chemistry, you can understand a lot of stuff. Because really, life is chemistry. Life is about how things connect, how things relate to each other. Life is relationships, all of life. We wouldn't have life if little atoms didn't somehow relate to each other. They didn't connect to each other. One of the ways they connect is through this bonding, uh, through bonding, which is part of some mysterious thing called the electromagnetic force. Nobody knows what that is, but it's basically just bonding, those little lines that you see in your little line drawings in organic chemistry, just little magnetic connections. If you can understand magnets, how magnets go together, you can understand chemistry. Magnets, if you hit them, if you touch them just right, they'll connect. And that connection is a bond, that magnetic connection. And by the way, if you pull that bond apart with your hands, two magnets, imagine holding two magnets together and you pull that bond apart, you can almost feel a kind of energy between those two magnets. That's the energy of life. That energy that you feel, that kind of, it's hard to explain what it is, and even scientists can't explain what it is, that force that you feel when you rip apart two magnets that are connected to each other. Folks, that's life. That's the energy of life. And the reason why taking in nutrition is so important is because you're taking in all of that energy, whether it's in the form of proteins or fats or carbohydrates or vitamins or fats. Now the minerals are a little bit different. I'm going to leave that aside for now, but uh, fats contain super amounts of this electrical force, super amounts of this electrical energy, and they actually contain this electrical energy in three different strengths. The fats, uh, the, uh, the essential fats or the nutritional fats or the dietary fats, I should say, contain special kinds of connections that are extra strength connections. In biology and in nutrition, these bonds come in three strengths, like scoops of ice cream, single scoops, double scoops, triple scoops, except we call them single bonds, double bonds, and triple bonds. And you can think of a double bond as having extra energy than a single bond. And this is what makes the omegas important. In fact, if you hear the word omega, yeah, it might as well substitute in your brain double bond. An omega is a double bond. And a fat with a double bond is extra, extra, extra important. The vast majority of stuff in the body is a single scoop or a single bond. Rarely you'll find triple scoops, hardly ever. Cyanide is an example of a triple scoop. Uh, carbon monoxide is a triple scoop. They don't happen very much. The most interesting magnetic connections are the double scoops, the double bonds. And in the world of fats, those are the omegas. An omega fat is a fat that has at least one double scoop or double bond. And this high energy, this high electricity is what makes these things so important. Omega-9s, oleic acid particularly, which uh, we hear about all the time in, in the world of nutrition, it's not essential, but it's important. It's not essential because the body can make it, but it's important. When you hear the word unsaturated, 
That's referring to a double bond. An unsaturated bond is a double bond. So unsaturated equals double bond equals omega. Unsaturated oils are all important. They all are. And oleic acid is an unsaturated oil. It's got one double bond. That's why they say it's mono unsaturated. And it gets its name because it was first found in olive oil. Oleic acid, the term oleic acid comes from the word olive. Oleic comes from the word olive. And it's one of the richest sources. Olive oil is one of the richest sources of this stuff. It's monounsaturated. You'll hear that term all the time in the world of fats and in the world of nutrition. Monounsaturated only has one omega, one double bond. In addition to olive oil, which is the major source of oleic acid, you'll find it in sunflower, safflower oils, nut oils, peanut oils, macadamia nut oils, all contain oleic acid. Uh, it's also found in lard, interestingly, unlike the other omega oils. You can get oleic acid from, from lard. And these days, oleic acid has been touted for various health benefits, particularly when it comes to the heart, cardiovascular health benefits. You'll actually see sunflower oil advertised as high oleic content. They're kind of promoting the fact that they have oleic acid in there. Oleic acid, as I say, has some pretty important health benefits. Monounsaturated fats, you'll hear them call monounsaturated fats. They're particularly important for lowering cholesterol levels, lowering blood fats. They're important for the brain. They're important for blood pressure. They may even have an appetite suppressant effect. Well, that's the latest literature. Oleic acid, interestingly, is a key component of pheromones. Pheromones, especially the ones that are emitted from insects. When insects die, they will actually secrete their bodies, their corpses, the dead bodies of insects, will secrete oleic acid, which tells other insects, you better stay away. How cool is that? Insects will talk to other insects when they're dead via their pheromones, via, via their oleic acid. In fact, scientists are looking to oleic acid as a cockroach repellent or as an insecticide, or not insecticide, but an insect repellent to keep bugs away from crops. They call it the death stench. This is what scientists call the smell, the death stench. They call the smell of the oleic acid pheromone, the death stench. In a study that was published in the Journal of Evolutionary Biology, they said that they, they're looking to uh, use the death stench for repelling pests from homes or food storage areas because the effect is so strong and because it applies to all kinds of species of insects. Pretty much all insects are responsive to this death stench, and it's non-toxic. It's a non-toxic insect repellent, oleic acid. Skincare products use oleic acid a lot because oleic acid has a skin softening property. Now, skin oleic acid also has a lot of problems. There's a lot of problems linked to oleic acid when it comes to the skin, especially in terms of acne. Yes, it turns out that when we're deficient in the omega threes and the omega, actually the omega sixes, more importantly, when we're deficient in the omega sixes, our body will attempt to use omega nines instead of omega sixes. And as we'll talk about here in a bit, omega sixes have two double bonds. Omega sixes are more energetic than the monounsaturated fats. So while the body will attempt to use oleic acid when you're deficient in omega sixes, it's not the same thing. And you'll end up with less liquidy cells. Cells have to be liquidy. They have to be kind of flowing. And even more importantly, when it comes to acne, you'll end up with sticky sebum. Sebum, which is skin oil, and as most people who break out know, is linked to pimple formation, zip formation, or even oily skin. One of the reasons why pimples will form is because omega-3, omega, the uh, omega-9s are being substituted because we're deficient in the EFAs. This is why you want to use EFAs if you're breaking out. This is why you want to use EFAs if you have oily skin. All right, I'll finish this up when we come back from our break, and then we'll take your calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. On the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side, talking omegas. Our number is uh, 844-236-6010, and we do have a couple lines open for you. We'll get your calls here in just a moment. I want to finish up real quickly here. So much to talk about with the omega, omega fatty acids. Omega, uh, omega 9s are not essential. Take-home message, are not essential, but they are important. And they're also problematic. 
because the body will attempt to use omega-9s if it doesn't have enough omega-6s. It'll make cells with omega-9s if it doesn't have om enough omega-6s. And because the omega-9s are so much more liquidy, they got more energy. I didn't tell you that part. The more energy a fat has, the more liquidy it's going to be. So these liquid fats have lots of energy. Omega-9s, because they only have one, uh, one double bond, one scoop, or one double bond, I should say, uh, they don't have as much energy as the omega-6s, which have two double bonds, and consequently, they're stiffer, and the products the body makes with them will be stiffer, including sebum, including skin oil. And this is what, one of the reasons why people break out is because their sebum is sticky, because it's got omega-9 in it, not omega-6. So use your ultimate EFAs if you're producing lots of skin oil. Use your omega uh, your ultimate essential fatty acids or your ultimate EFA plus, which are sources of omega-6s, if you find that you're breaking out. A lot of times people won't want to take their omegas or their essential fatty acids because they're afraid that they're too oily. Well, it's not that they're too oily because they're producing too much oil. They're too oily because they're producing the wrong kind of oil. So for people who are breaking out, ultimate EFAs, whether your skin's oily or not, you still need the ultimate EFAs. You'll make thinner, more liquidy sebum, and it won't clog pores as much. Not that you, there's other things you need too, of course. It's not like a cure, but you'll have healthier sebum and healthier cells all over your body. There's actually, uh, there was an oil, a movie that came out about something called Lorenzo's Oil, you may have heard. It came out about 20 years ago, a movie about this thing, Lorenzo's Oil, which is just basically omega-9, uh, omega fatty acid, with a little uh, of another kind of omega acid called erucic acid, which is found in canola or rapeseed oil. And they actually use it for a, a type of, a strange type of disease, a demyelinating disease, where the myelin just comes off of your nerve cells, and it actually worked pretty well. And there's some interesting reasons for that. I'm not going to get into that, but Lorenzo's oil actually took advantage of the, uh, uh, of the uh, omega-9 oleic acid fat that's found in vegetable oils. All right. Tomorrow we'll talk more about uh, the omegas, omega-6s, and omega-3s. Talk about diabetes and your essential fatty acids. You know there's a relationship between blood sugar control and essential fatty acids. You guys, these things are fabulously, unbelievably important. Do you know essential fatty acids are like statin drugs? They'll actually lower your cholesterol like a statin drug. Now, what should you rather have? A toxic, poison statin drug that you've got to wait in line at the pharmacy and you've got to go to the doctor for? And you've got to fill out all kinds of insurance forms and everything else that you do at the doctor's office? Or essential fatty acids, which act like statin drugs and give you all the benefits of essential fatty acids. Okay, that's why we're here. That's why we're here, telling, uh, telling the story about nutrition versus drugs. Telling the story about the power of nutrition as opposed to the toxic, although powerful, nature of prescription drugs. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm pharmacist Ben. Let's go to Wisconsin. Good morning, Lisa. How you doing? Lisa? Hello? I heard, hey, Lisa. How's it going? Good morning. Lisa? Hello? Hello, hello. You there? Yes. You can't hear me. Ben? Le yes, we hear you, Lisa. How are you doing this morning? I'm good. How are you? I'm um, well. What's cooking? What's going on in Wisconsin? Well, it's, uh, it's balmy today. Is so, it balmy? I, I, I heard Wisconsin, say. you get brutal winters out there. Well, we do. We get awful winters, but we just happen to be on the right side of the wind today, and it's balmy. So. Oh, good for you. Look forward right. to those days. Good deal. So what's going on? How can we help you? Well, I was listening last week, and I wanted to give you a call. Um, I have a condition uh, called lichen sclerosis. Yes, ma'am. Sure I know all it. about it. So I'm yes. probably calling for about uh, a third of the women in the country who uh -huh. don't even want to talk about it anymore. Um, uh, is it? Go I, ahead. I really wanted your insight. You seem to be a skin specialist. I've been dealing with this for, I don't know, 20 years. Well, and I've been... Uh, I, is there yeah, any no. way to get rid of this? Yes, Absolutely. Thing? Absolutely, absolutely, Lay absolutely. On, <laughs> what did they give? Did they give you steroids for it? Is that what they're? You know, they did years ago. And by the way, I'll tell you, I was never positively tested. They didn't do um, a biopsy. Thank God. Okay. It was it, at that point. It was so bad they didn't feel like they had to. Okay. And they put me on steroids, and I did that for um, I did that for several years. You know, when there was a breakout, uh, and then I actually worked with somebody who was more uh, holistic, and I was doing garlic douching, which actually seemed to work, but it, 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 it comes and it goes. Okay. And I don't I, understand what's tripping it. I'm going to tell you exactly what's doing it, okay? First of all, you know that, as you, as you pointed out, it's really a woman's issue more than it is a male issue. Uh, yeah. and whenever that occurs, you always want to think about estrogen. That's the primary, from a, from a biochemical 
perspective. That's the primary distinction between men and women is estrogen. Right. Right. There's, I'm, I'm being very general here, but usually when you have a health issue that affects mostly women, that's what you want to think about. And I'll t tell you how that works here in a second. But just to, just to add to that, Alzheimer's disease is a woman's disease primarily, mm -hmm. uh, or, or most, not primarily, but a lot more women have it than men. And also autoimmune diseases are much more likely to occur in females in women than in men, which tells you something right there. There's an estrogen component to all of these health issues that nobody's really talking about. The fact of the matter is, while we always hear about estrogen as being a female hormone and as being important for anti-aging, that's more marketing than anything else. That's all from uh, drug companies wanting to push estrogen products on it. And by the way, while I'm on the subject here, there's no such thing as bioidentical hormones. Let's dispel with that myth. No, you can't be bioidentical with any of your hormones. I'm not saying bad or good, yay or nay, but I'm just telling you, they're not bioidentical. That's more marketing. When you start playing with hormones, you're playing, you don't know what you're doing because everything is controlled by hormones. So anyway, you're looking at an estrogen issue. Whenever you have an estrogen issue, it's not so much estrogen itself, but the breakdown products of estrogen. Those are a special type of estrogen they call catechol estrogens. I'm not going to get into that, but just think of it as a derivative of estrogen. Estrogen has to be cleared out of the body quickly because it's very powerful stuff. When I was making uh, compounding products in the pharmacy with estrogen, I hated doing it because you had to be accurate to the, to the microgram. You had to use these really powerful scales, and you couldn't be even micrograms off or else you could cause problems because estrogen is so powerful. So when, when when the body, when estrogen goes up in the body, the body has to detoxify it and has to clear it out quickly. However, the detoxification of estrogen and the clearing out of estrogen depend on the digestive system. The clearing out of estrogen and the detoxification of estrogen depend on probiotics as well as bile. It comes out in the bile, which is a, a, product, of the gall, a product of the liver, and also the gallbladder is connected to that, as well as probiotics in the intestine. So my dear. I'm guaranteeing you 100% that you got a digestive condition going on. All right? Yeah. Do you know this? Does this sound, sound familiar? It could be, uh, it, it was a, it's a suspicion, that's for sure. Okay. I've done everything else. I, okay. I can't. That's can't where you want to be focusing. You want right. to be focusing on estrogen via the intestines and bile and liver. Now, it could also involve, when I say the liver, that's a digestive organ, but it does lots of other things too. Mm -hmm. so, so it could be involve the liver, it could involve the digestive, uh, the intestine, or it could involve bile or even the gallbladder. So what you want to do is start working with your fat metabolism. This is all involves fats. Estrogen is a fat, and it's cleared as other fats are. So I, I got a few more things to tell you, but, but for, for uh, right now, you want to use uh, the Biolumin Nightly Essence three in the morning, three in the afternoon, three at night. Uh, probably uh, the, your, your ultimate EFAs as well. Well, we'll finish up when we come back from our break. So hang okay. on. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we're back on the Bright Side talking to Lisa in Wisconsin about lichen sclerosis, which is a skin condition. Basically, it affects the genitals and women mostly, and that always reminds me of estrogen, and it should remind everybody of estrogen whenever a health challenge, uh, whenever a health challenge affects mostly women. Estrogen is an inflammatory hormone when it's not processed correctly. It can also spike the immune system when it's not processed correctly. In fact, a lot of folks, Lisa, are you there, ma'am? Yes, I'm here. A lot of folks think of it as an auto, these days anyway, I don't want to say a lot, but some researchers believe it's an autoimmune disease or part of an autoimmune function. In any case, the immune system is definitely involved and the inflammatory system is definitely involved. The fact that it affects women tells me you want to start working with estrogen and also, by the way, iodine. Iodine, if you're not using it, can be very helpful for all estrogenic issues, uh, fibrocystic breasts and, and uh, uh, endometriosis and other uh, female issues. So I'd be supplementing with iodine in addition to the essential fatty acids, the ultimate EFAs, and in addition to all the digestive support you can think of. See if you can notice when your lichen sclerosis symptoms flare up. That is a major clue there for you. Do you notice flare-ups ever? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's Perfect. Insane. No, the flare-ups are your best friend. 
because the flare-ups are pointers to what you did in the last couple of usually 12 hours or so. Mm. You know, okay. you see what I'm saying? If yep. you could, if you can pinpoint the flare-up to what you were doing within the last 12 hours, that's going to be major information for you, and it will usually involve a food. In fact, it almost always involve a food. Mm. Now, s- certain things like stresses can make a difference, of course, but for the most part, the largest component of flare-ups is going to involve foods. So okay. see what you do. A food diary, that's great. See if you can link up uh, flare-ups to digestive symptomology. Constipation, for example, often goes hand in hand with lichen sclerosis. Mm. That's, be- that's because the thyroid is often involved. And there's a, another relationship between the thyroid and estrogen, but I don't want to get too off on a tangent. But most people who have lichen sclerosis and skin issues are going to find that there's hypothyroidism. The, the whole triangle is going to be involved, which is th- the thyroid, the blood sugar system, and the digestive system. So those are where you're going to want to be working. Get on the nightly essence, do the healthy start pack, throw in a little bit of extra iodine, and make sure that you're getting extra zinc, 50 milligrams a day of zinc, extremely important for all skin health issues, for all estrogen health issues, for pretty much all issues, and of course for the immune system. I'd also be using the ultimate selenium as well. You might want to try the Fucoid Z2, and then... uh, Let's see if there's any, oh, uh, fat metab, uh, helping your body process fats, using the ultimate enzymes with all of your meals, bile salts with all of your meals, uh, uh, lecithin granules with your meals, and then apple cider vinegar to activate the enzymes. Of course, that's always going to be helpful, and that'll also be helpful for the digestive tract. Last thing, super important for the digestive system are the fibers and the nitrates that you get from vegetables. So veggie juices can also be very helpful for you. All right. Oh, 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 one more thing. I know. I keep adding these things here. Uh, uh, flax seeds and other fiber can also be helpful. Flax seeds, in particular, because they're a good source of anti-estrogen or estrogen-blocking components, natural estrogen-blocking components. So that might help you too. Grinding up some flax seeds, and that also help you if you're constipated too. Grinding them up and and doing a couple of teaspoons or three teaspoons in a glass of water uh, and drinking it down once a day. All right, Lisa. Got you it. notice I didn't say anything about rubbing something on your skin, by the way, because it's not, right? Isn't that what everybody will tell you to rub something on your skin? This is the great myth about skin care is that all you do is rub something on the skin. It doesn't work that way, with the exception of some vitamins. Uh, most skin care products are just making money for skin care companies. All right. Anything else? Thank you. Okay, good. Thanks. Have a, okay. have a good day. Hope we helped you out. All right. Jessica in Texas. Good morning. What's up? Hello, Bear. Hey. Um, uh, I have a question. I have a friend that is 64, and he has two things I want to ask you about. He has, like, a big white pimple right in the tear duct. Uh-huh. A sty. Huh? A sty. Oh, okay. It's... But it, it stays there. He's had it yeah. for a year or so. That's got to be miserable. Oh, my God. Yeah, That's got to be miserable. It's blocking the tears. And yes. Oh, my God. I can, I'm feeling it now as you're saying that. Yeah, it's got to be he awful. He feels it like it's growing. Oh, this that that's an awful thing. All right, here's the deal. Yeah. Well, you got to you got to zoom in with your X-ray with your uh, with your Superman vision and look look at what's happening in the cyst or the sty yeah. or the pimple as you call it. So we got to zoom in. What's happening is cells are not dividing correctly, and that always means or that usually means there's something wrong with the outside part of the cell. And this is true about all cysts and pimples and and funny growths. The outside part of a cell is not doing its business. You know how cells divide and how they grow. That's very complicated stuff, and because we don't zoom in with our Superman vision to see what's happening in our imagination anyway at the tiniest of levels we just we don't know what to do even your doctor doesn't know what to do well i'm telling you what to do you want to focus on the outside part of the cell and that means fats uh, your ultimate efas probably you got a fat deficiency going on also fatty vitamins fats and fatty vitamins those are your two main things and and the hormone estrogen sometimes is involved in the hormone insulin so guess what we got our triangle of disease you work on the digestive system to help the body process fats okay jessica yeah. so so have him uh, ask him or have him look into his digestive issues food diary see what foods cause problems and eliminate those foods now you he may think well what the heck is what i eat what i am eating have to to do with a, a pimple in my eye. It has everything to do with it because the fats that are coming in or not coming in through the diet are affecting the cells and the cells aren't dividing correctly depending on what kind of fat or are dividing or not dividing correctly depending on the fats. Ultimate EFAs, digestive enzymes, the bioluminightly essence, all the things we just talked about with our last caller for fat metabolism and for fats. That's the first thing and that alone may make, a, may make all the difference in the world. Okay? The ultimate EFAs, I'm 
talking about, and uh, uh, good back, the uh, uh, bioluminite essence, the good bacteria, as well as the digestive enzymes. Then there's the fatty vitamins, which are also important. I'd be using 20,000 IU of vitamin A a day. I would be using 400 international units of vitamin E a day, and then uh, maybe some fish oil to get his, vitamin, his uh, vitamin D, and also the sun is another good way to get vitamin D. All of this, again, is dependent on, the, on digestion, though, so you've got to make sure he's do, using all the digestive support. A couple other things that are important for how uh, keeping cells dividing correctly are the mineral zinc, 50 milligrams a day, and then also he may want to try using a little progesterone cream. Uh, if he's 64 years old, that wouldn't hurt him anyway. Uh, he'd get other benefits from that, but that might balance out any estrogen problems that he's having, if he indeed is having estrogen problems, and it's not uncommon that as men get older, they produce a lot of estrogen, or more estrogen. So uh, using progesterone cream might be helpful as well. What it, it most certainly is not as topical, I can tell you that for sure. It is internal, and that usually means, for the most part, it's going to be something nutritional, and that means something he's, eat, something he's getting f through food or something he's not getting. So try all those strategies, and hopefully that works. Let me know what happens. You can give us a call back. He should notice results pretty darn quickly. At the very least, he's going to notice he feels better. But he should, he should notice results in the sty uh, pretty quickly within a couple of weeks or three weeks of starting a program like I just described. Okay, he, uh, he's taking the, he started taking the Udo's blend. That's a very good idea. Who told yeah. him to do that? Uh, maybe two weeks or so, I don't know. No, that's great. That's great. Is he noticing anything or do you know? Uh, no, I don't know. no, not noticing anything. So make sure that he's using all the digestive support because he may not be processing his fats. He should have noticed something. Okay. Okay? Okay, and the other thing, uh, he, he says he has, like, tingling in the hands. Okay, yeah, he, that's a sign of diabetes and prediabetes. The guy's breaking down. It's basically what's happening. So have you heard me talk about the triangle, the triangle yeah. of disease? He's a classic case for that. Digestion, blood sugar, thyroid. Adrenal thyroid complex. And those okay. where you're gonna. Those are the three areas you need to work always. And he's a classic case. So you want to start throwing in some diabetes support in there too. Uh, blood sugar control could help him. Okay. Chromium vanadium in the sweeties, keeping his sugar intake down. Yeah. All of the things Sorry. that we talk about. The Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Don't underestimate the power of the BTT for sugar issues, blood sugar uh -huh. issues. Also, uh, selenium uh, uh, is also important for blood sugar control. And the mineral sulfur is also important. Sulfur is part of the insulin molecule. Without enough sulfur, you can't make enough insulin. So using MSM sulfur might be helpful, too. Okay. Okay? Okay. Thanks, Thank Jessica. You. Have a great day. I'd like to hear how he does, too, if you can call us back maybe in a couple weeks. Okay. Okay, okay good. You. Take care. All right. Let's go to uh, Helen in Canada. Oh, let's go to uh, Helen in Canada. Sorry. Truth Radio. We'll try to get to you here uh, in a sec. Helen, what's going on? Well, actually, I have been diagnosed with atrial fibrillation and okay. so was put on a warfarin. I'm sorry and to I hear that. I actually would prefer not to. I'm sure. I'm just wondering whether there is something that I can do in the natural realm. Uh, yes, a lot you can do. AFib is your heart freaking out. You know what right. a fibrillation is? Have you, yes, do you I know do. what that means? Yes, and I do. Just think I have a of background, so I do. Oh, perfect, 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 perfect. It's like Jello. You know, you poke Jello, and it kind of blah, 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 blah. that's what happens when you fibrillate. Your heart's supposed. To, I'm not saying this to you, Hal. I'm telling the listeners. Fibrillation. Your heart is supposed to beat in a rhythm, a powerful rhythm, and that takes a lot of work for that to happen. When uh, w when it doesn't occur correctly, it fibrillates, and that throws the rhythm off. The blood doesn't move appropriately, and they put you on warfarin. Not a good drug. A very bad drug. Here's the uh, Hal. You're gonna have to call me back tomorrow because we got to go fast. You okay. got to calm your body down. It's a sign of a hyped up sympathetic nervous system, a hyped up stress nervous system, and there's lots of ways to calm the body down, but most importantly, keeping your sugar down and uh, oxygenation, making sure you're deep breathing. Uh, fibrillation can be induced by hypoxia, low blood oxygen, so practicing deep breathing. Uh, nutrients of choice are going to be your EFAs and the B vitamins, probably vitamin C also. I hate picking on just certain nutrients, but those are important, as well as magnesium. Helen, I, I'm just out of time. If you shoot me an email, ben at ksco.com with your phone number, I'll give you a call back, or you can call us back tomorrow, and we can get your question on the air. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for listening, friends. Have a beautiful, spectacular, awesome day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Bye for now.